Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We'd like to call the uh, meeting of the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners to order. And we'll be led in prayer by Commissioner Turner. And then we'll have our pledge to the flag by Commissioner Baum. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for the opportunity, Lord, that we've been given to represent the citizens of Rutherford County, Lord. And I'm thankful to, uh, to be able to serve up here. And we just ask that tonight with many of the tough discussions that we're going to have and decisions that are going to be made that you help each one of us, Lord, to have a clear mind and honest intention and uh, to represent our citizens with uh, class and dignity as we discuss these tough matters. I ask that you be with each one of these families that are here tonight, Lord, that you be with those that are watching at home, and we're thankful for you sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. I ask this in his name. Amen. Okay, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Schaefer? Here. Commissioner Black? Here. Commissioner Jordan? Here. Commissioner P? Here. Commissioner Cook? Here. Commissioner Jernigan? Here. Commissioner Farley? Here. Commissioner Phillips? Here. Commissioner Sandlin? Here. Commissioner Turner? Here. Commissioner Allen? Here. Commissioner Stevens? Here. Commissioner Jordan? Here. Commissioner Baum? Here. Commissioner Coggin? Present. Commissioner Young? Here. Commissioner Phillips? Present. Commissioner McAdoo? Here. Commissioner Ely? Here. Commissioner Gooch? Here. Commissioner Serenio? Yes. 21 present. Hey, thank you very much. You have before you a copy of the minutes of the last meeting. Do we have a motion? Commissioner Jeff Phillips. Mr. Chairman, I've uh, Taking the opportunity to review those minutes, find them in order, and move for their approval. Second from Commissioner Jernigan. Did anyone have any corrections or additions? If not, all of you in favor of that, then please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Okay, we have um, a couple of resolutions of sympathy tonight. And the first one is on behalf of Mr. Joe Jack DeMint. Commissioner Black will... Uh, present that resolution. Yes, thank you. Um, I'd like to read, read a resolution of sympathy for Mr. Joe Jack DeMint. Whereas it was with great sadness that the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners learned of the death of Joe Jack DeMint, a friend of many, and whereas Mr. DeMint is survived by his wife, Geraldine Jerry Bennett, DeMint, sons Robert Allen, Mary Ann DeMint, Edwin Wallace, Elizabeth DeMint, and Joseph Miller and Patty DeMint, daughter Ann DeMint, Richard Pocket, 11 grandchildren and six great-grandchildren. And whereas Mr. DeMint was a member of the North Minister Prep Presbyterian Church and a retired instructor with the Agricultural Department at MTSU and a farmer. And whereas he was a member of the <clears throat> Rutherford County Soil Conservation District, the Rutherford County Farm Bureau, Alpha Gamma Rho Fraternity, Rutherford County Beekeepers Club, was a 50-year mason and a member of the Last Cases Milton's Lions Club. And whereas Mr. DeMint was a veteran of World War II and a member of the North Minister Presbyterian Church and whereas we know that his passing has caused great sadness to his family and friends. Now therefore be it resolved that the Rufford County Board of Commissioners at its regular session on this 15th day of August 2013 does hereby extend sincere sympathy to the family of Mr. Joe Jack DeMint and be it further resolved that a copy of this Resolution of sympathy be forward to the family of Mr. DeMint by the clerk of this legislative body. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Jordan and others. All in favor of that, please say aye. Aye. Well, thank you, Commissioner Black. Uh, we all remember Mr. DeMint fondly over many, many years of serving this county, and, and he's 
tremendous asset in he and Miss uh, Jerry. Okay. Next, we will call upon Commissioner Chanto Serino, I believe, or is Mr. McAdoo going to do this one since you've known him? I believe Mr. McAdoo is the only one that was here, maybe, when our uh, Mr. Sellers served as our county attorney. Is that correct, Mr. McAdoo? Uh, that's correct, but also uh, our county attorney, Jim Cope, was on board in that. He was here with us then? As a county commissioner. You were, as a county commissioner. You were a county commissioner. I didn't remember that or know that. Okay, well, thank you then, uh, Mr. McAdoo. We'll let but you... Commissioner. Good, Mr. S Good. We appreciate that. Mr. Serino will come up here and serve with him. Uh, first of all, I know we got a long agenda, but I must tell this. Uh, when I was elected in 1978, I was appointed chairman of law enforcement and billboard. And my first meeting, we had over 200 people in here, along with Grant Kelly leading the charge that was in opposition for beer at a store in Leanna. The uh, applicant came in and came up, set a 357 down on the table. And so being chairman, I slipped out of the room <laughs> <laughs> and called, and I don't know why, but the first name that came to me was called Bill Sellers. So I called him at home and I was discussing it with him, and I said 357, and I didn't hear nothing else. Five minutes, I don't know where he came from, but he was here. We called the sheriff, and we all came in the room and took care of business. After that, they called a special meeting, and it was in the county executive office at that time. And they called me up, and they were discussing it with me. And they made the statement, we don't want to lose you. So I thought I was getting ready to be impeached and only been on the board for a month. But what it was, they were giving me some directions that I needed to have the sheriff and the county attorney present at these meetings. And during that year, we took care of the billboard. We put it out as a separate board from elected officials. But Bill Sellers was a type of gentleman as a county attorney that would come any time. I don't care if it was Monday, Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday, or whatever. And he would discuss the issues with you. He loved this county dearly. And I think many of you knew that. Resolution of sympathy. Whereas it was with great sadness that the Relford County Board of Commissioners learned of the death of William T. Bill Sellers, Lieutenant J.G., United States Naval Reserve, a friend of many, and whereas Mr. Sellers was preceded in death by his wife, Nancy Smith Sellers, and son, William T. Ted Sellers, Jr., and is survived by sons Ewan Kathy Sellers, and Alan Janet Sellers, and daughter Cindy Tom Forrester, and seven grandchildren. And whereas a veteran of World War II, Mr. Sellers was a naval avi aviator flying Hellcats off the carrier USS Independence as a member of Air Group 27. And whereas Mr. Sellers practiced law for 54 years and was the Relford County attorney for 25 years and served as attorney for the Industrial Development Board and Health Education Facilities Board. And whereas he was a charter member of the Exchange Club and served on the Relford County Nursing Home Board. And whereas Mr. Sellers was a member and deacon of First Baptist Church. And whereas we know that his passing has called great sadness to his family and friends. Now, Therefore, be it resolved that the Relford County Board of Commissioners at its regular session on this 15th day of August 2013 does hereby extend sincere sympathy to the family of Mr. William T. Bill Sellers and be it further resolved 
that a copy of this resolution of sympathy be forwarded to the family of Mr. Sellers by the clerk of this legislative body. And I so move. Second. Mr. Serino, second. All of you in favor of that, then please say aye. Aye. Very good, very good. Thank you again. Great job, Mr. McAdoo there. Okay, next, a special resolution of appreciation for a special person, Mr. Delwyn Corbett. And we're going to call on Commissioner Jeff Phillips to uh, make this uh, presentation. Dale and uh, Catherine and their family that's present, please come up, if you would, please, all of you. I can see his daughter Louise not real happy about that, but it's just the way it is, Louise. See if I can introduce everybody. Of course, this is Dale Corbin. Uh, Dalewin, I didn't know there was such a thing as a Dalewin until tonight, but uh, we've all known him as Dale, his wife, Catherine. I believe this is Erica and Evan, and I already mentioned Louise. This is his daughter, Louise, grandchildren and daughter. I uh, um, have been a member of the Rutherford County Regional Planning Commission almost since 1990. Um, took a a four-year break, but uh, it's been my pleasure to work with Dale uh, for the last 12 years or so, uh, and as chair of that commission to work a little bit more intimately with Dale over the last couple of years. Um, and, and it has become a, uh, more than just a working relationship, but a friendship, and it has been my pleasure to be able to work with him uh, for these several years. Um, let me just say that his level-headedness, his common sense approach has helped us as a planning commission through some very complex issues. And I mean that, uh, specifically the most recent one being the stormwater issue that we've dealt with and uh, Dale has just done a wonderful job setting the county in the right direction. Let me shut up and read this resolution if I could. Resolution of appreciation for Delwyn Corbin whereas Delwyn Corbin served as the Rutherford County Engineer from June 1998 until his retirement on June uh, 2013, and whereas Dale is married to Catherine Long Corbin, and their marriage has been blessed with three children and six grandchildren, and whereas Dale served as a member of the U.S. Army and Public Health Service from 1973 to 1998, and whereas he is an active member of First Baptist Church, and whereas Dale enjoys golfing, I played with him and the seniors over uh, yesterday morning over at Old Fort, I beat him. Uh, and he didn't have to let me this time either. Uh, he also enjoys hiking, square dancing. Uh, and on this resolution, it doesn't mention fishing, but he wore me out riding in a golf cart talking about uh, his uh, great adventures of fishing, and he mentioned Catherine catching the biggest fish on a trip they went to. So I'm going to add fishing to things he enjoys. Whereas he and Catherine have visited all 50 states, that's pretty cool, and their retirement goal is to visit every Tennessee state park, that's also pretty cool. Now, therefore, it be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that we extend this resolution of appreciation to Dale Corbin for his years of service to Rutherford County while serving as the county engineer. And we express our best wishes to him and his wife, Catherine, for many years of happiness during his retirement. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution of appreciation be forwarded to Dale Corbin by the clerk of this legislative body. Resolved this 15th day of August, 2013. Mr. Chairman, I so move. Second by Commissioner Sandlin and others, I'm sure. All of you in favor of that, then please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. He's going to take one more bite at the apple while he's here. One last shot. I want to thank you for the, the resolution, and I want to say that our years here have been uh, very meaningful. Uh, Catherine and I uh, chose this area for the 
the many benefits that are here. We like Four Seasons and the, and the location and that stuff. And I found in working with the local leaders that there's a lot of opportunities here, a lot of level-headed people. There's a lot of growth going on, as you know, in the area and a lot of challenges. So I just want to thank all of you uh, for the opportunity to work with you and uh, just give you the best. Uh, retirement is, somebody asked me about retirement now that I've had about a month of it. And one guy, I asked another guy, he said, it seemed like every day is Saturday. That's the only way I can express it to you. So thanks again. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, sir, very much for your service. Okay. We have a series of uh, resolutions of recognition for some important young people that have won some championships. And we're going to start first. Commissioner Young is going to tell us about uh, two of... Uh, a team and an individual from Central Magnet School. So, Commissioner Young. If they're here, they can come on up. I don't know if they're here or not. Be, uh, let's see, which one you have up first? Doing Andre Hillsman. Okay. How are you doing, sir? Congratulations. Y'all come on up. <laughs> That's all right. Whereas Central Magnet School's Andre Hillsman recently won a state championship for the 3200 class, and whereas Andre placed third in six, the 1600 and sixth in the 800, and whereas this has been an exciting and successful season, and special commendation is due for Coach Brent Meadows and Principal John Ash for their dedication and commitment, which has made this championship possible, and for bringing that, this fine publicity to our community by their good sportsmanship and inspired team play. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that we extend this resolution of recognition to Central Magnet Schools' Andre Hillsman, Coach Meadows, and Principal Ash for their successful year. Let it be resolved this 15th day of August 2013. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. Second, Commissioner Schaefer and others. All in favor of this, then please say aye. aye. Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> Y'all stay up here. Stay up here because I got to read back. Uh, we'll let y'all say a few words at the end if y'all want to. They can stay up here with you, can't they? Um, the the relay team couldn't be here tonight. They're running cross country. Uh, we're gonna. <laughs> they're they're always running. So, uh, but we do have a re resolution for them. Whereas Central Magnet School's four by eight hundred relay team recently won a state championship with a time of eight. Uh, 1205, and whereas the team made up of Justin Young, Jordan Turney, Danny Mulane, and Noah Delk, all juniors, and where this has been an exciting and successful season and special accommodation is due to all team members, Coach Brent Meadows, Principal John Ash, and their dedication and commitment, which made this championship possible for bringing the publicity uh, to our community for their good sportsmanship and inspired team play. Now there it be resolved that the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that we extend this resolution of recognition to Central Magnet School's 4x800 relay team, Coach Meadows and Principal Ash for their successful year resolved this 15th day of August 2013. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. Okay, second from Commissioner Jordan and others in Jordan. All of you in favor of this, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much, and congratulations Thank again, you. Coach Meadows and Principal Ash, for your leadership in this group of young men. <laughs> Next, we'll call on Commissioner Coggin on behalf of two resolutions for some athletes at Middle Tennessee Christian School. Chairman. At this time, I'd like to ask Dr. Ellenberg if he'd like to come up. As you can tell, uh, Dr. Ellenberg is, is neither uh, Mark Claiborne or Kip Kaler, the doubles tennis champions. However, he is the new president at um, Middle Tennessee Christian School, so we're delighted to have him here. Kip and, and uh, Mark are preparing to begin their journey in college, so we're excited for them. So they are regretful that they are not here today, as well as Coach Goodwin is coaching the uh, soccer team, and Principal Miller is coaching the junior high football team. Um, so uh, we are a busy school over there. That's right. So bottom top, whatever. It's, 
All right, resolution for recognition of Middle Tennessee Christian School State Doubles Tennis Championship. Whereas Middle Tennessee Christian School's doubles tennis team recently captured the TSSAA State Doubles Championship, and whereas Mark Claiborne and Kip Kaler won this title on May 24, 2013, when they won 7 6 6 1 over Signal Mountains, Adam Wolf and Forrest Wooten in the Class A AA doubles final. And whereas Middle Tennessee Christian School started in 1962, and this honor represents the first, the first TSSAA state championship in any sport in school history. And whereas this has been an exciting and successful season, and special commendation is due to Coach Lawrence Goodwin and Principal Todd Miller for their dedication and commitment, which made this championship possible, and for bringing this fine publicity to our community by their good sportsmanship and inspired team play. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that we extend this resolution of recognition to Middle Tennessee Christian School doubles tennis team, Coach Lawrence Goodwin and Principal Todd Miller for their successful year. Resolved this 15th day of August 2013. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. Second, Commissioner Stevens. All in favor, then, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will say one thing. Uh, Kip and Mark could not be here. They're, they're both playing tennis in college now, but uh, I just wanted to let you know how proud we are at Middle Tennessee Christian School of these two fine young men, uh, not just for the way they played tennis, but for the way they represented themselves, their families, their school, and, and this entire county on the court all season long. We can all be proud of them, and, and we appreciate them. Thank you. I'll say I also used to coach that team, and I had to get out of the way so that somebody could come in and actually get a championship. So I'm glad I moved on. In addition to that, I also used to coach uh, the trap team also. So if the trap team wants to go ahead and come down, ask President Ellenberg to stay up here. Um, we have the next resolution is for Middle Tennessee Christian School rookie trap team. They've got two championships. That's right, since I left. That's right. Thanks for rubbing that in, Commissioner Farley. Appreciate that. I'll tell you just a little bit about this this sport, if you will, not only this team, but this sport. I had a couple of uh, – Alan Loveless was big with the, the clay targets um, and big springs out there. But since that, uh, many, many years ago, probably, goodness, probably about 10, 12 years ago, he approached me along with a couple of our students to start this sport called clay target shooting in the school, at Middle Tennessee Christian School. And I thought, I have no idea what this is. But if kids want to do it and, you know, got some support, we'll, we'll give it a run, at least for a year. And let me tell you, it's one of, been one of the most amazing experiences of my life to be a part of this for a couple of reasons. And I'm not going to go on too much. But I want you to realize this sport, this clay target shooting, is in every high school in Rutherford County. In many, many, many schools in Tennessee. I, I mean, I don't know how many counties in Tennessee are represented, but a lot. Um, and, uh, and all over the country. It's, it's a very, very great sport for a couple of reasons. One, most importantly, it teaches them safety. In fact, Coach Mathis here took over the team, thankfully, once I, <laughs> once I moved on. And, uh, but before that, he had even started teaching a hunter safety course. All of these kids at, every, at any age have to go through a hunter safety course before they can, they can shoot on the team. Um, and so, and that's in every school. But it also teaches them discipline and focus um, and motivation. So uh, I'm really excited about this tonight. Um, so we'll move on. Whereas the Middle Tennessee Christian School rookie fourth and fifth graders, now fifth and sixth graders, don't want to hold you back there, trap team earned their first, notice first, coaches, first national championship by breaking 900 out of 1,000 targets at the Scholastic Clay Target Program National Championships in Sparta, Illinois. Whereas, in addition to being undefeated for the entire year, they won both the Tennessee Scholastic Clay Target Program State Championship and the Scholastic Clay Target Program National Championship. And whereas the team is made up of Coleman Stacy, Braden Smith, Austin Hillman, Tanner Moeller, K.J. Davis, Tyler Webb, Jake Barnett, Clint McClendon, Houston Beatty, and Michael Self. And whereas this has been an exciting and successful season, and special commendation is due to all team members, Coach Rob Mathis, 
Shannon Stacy, and Rusty Barnett, and Principal Mary Lee Merritt for their dedication and commitment, which made this championship possible and for bringing this fine publicity to our community by their good sportsmanship and inspired team play. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that we extend this resolution of recognition to Middle Tennessee Christian School's rookie trap team, coaches Rob Mathis, Shannon Stacy, and Rusty Barnett, and Principal Mary Lee Merritt for their successful year resolved this 15th day of August, 2013. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. Second, Commissioner Black and others there. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Congratulations, young men. Thank you very much. We very much appreciate this resolution tonight, and uh, thank you for this honor. These, these kids have worked very hard, and we appreciate the recognition, and uh, like Commissioner Coggin said they uh, uh, have learned a lot of skills over the course of the year. I like to think that their um, emotional strength is probably the biggest thing that they've learned this year. When they started back in January, some of them had never done anything like this before, and so they needed constant supervision. But by the end of the year, they, they were taking care of uh, all their own uh, you know, all, all the different processes it was required. They had earplugs in their ears. They, we couldn't even talk to them. And so as fourth and fifth graders, they exhibited a lot of emotional uh, uh, maturity. And so thank you again. Okay, next we have Commissioner Baum with a resolution re uh, honoring the uh, Siegel High School doubles tennis team. Thank you, and I'd like to ask Coach Martin and Ashley Bowles and uh, Marissa Kovach to come up here and join me, please. Either side. All right, whereas the Siegel High School State Doubles Team recently captured the state's first girls doubles title, and whereas Ashley Bowles and Marissa Kovach won this title on May 24, 2013, when they defeated Ravenwood's Iris Hayo and Katie Fitt, 4-6, 6-2, 6-0, in the Class AAA Doubles Final, and whereas this has been an exciting and successful season and special commendation is due to Coach Martin and Principal Bridgman for their dedication and commitment which made this championship possible and for bringing this fine publicity to our community by their good sportsmanship and inspired team play. Now therefore be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that we extend this resolution of recognition to the Siegel High School girls doubles tennis team Coach Martin and Principal Bridgman for their successful year. Resolve this 15th day of August 2013. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. And Commissioner Jordan and others, I'm sure. All in favor, then please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Congratulations and thank you very much. Okay. That completes the resolutions of recognition that we have for these championships. And it's basically 6.30. So at 6.30, it's time for us to have whatever public hearings are scheduled. And we do have one public hearing scheduled tonight. And so item M on your agenda is a rezoning request 13-A011, submitted by Monty Turner, located at 5854 Shepherdville Highway. The existing zoning is commercial neighborhood. The proposed zoning is commercial services on a site of approximately 2.9 acres. So Mr. DeMosi, you may explain more fully. Yes, Mayor Burgess, thank you, and good evening, Mayor and members of the Commission. Uh, the property in question contains a single-family home that was originally rezoned to the old uh, commercial category of services under our old zoning resolution back in 2011, 
and had a con conditional use permit for a convenience market and a restaurant. Uh, the Planning Commission has, at, since that time, has approved two site plans for the property, both for a Subway restaurant. Uh, however, no construction ever resulted from either of those site plan approvals, and both of those have since lapsed. The owner of the property now desires to sell the property to the uh, current applicant for the use of a Dollar General store. Uh, really, the, uh, the primary reason for this zoning before you tonight, it's not so much the use of the property that's at issue. Under the commercial neighborhood, there is a limit on the size of retail establishments of 5,000 square feet, and the applicant's proposing a store of approximately 9,100 square feet. So really, the only reason he's asking for the zoning change is to accommodate the larger building. The use is, uh, is still permitted in the commercial services zone as well. Uh, with that, uh, we did have a public hearing with this at the Planning Commission. Uh, there were no comments, as I can recall, and the Planning Commission did recommend approval of this by unanimous vote, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Are there any questions of Mr. DeMosi before we have the uh, public hearing? Okay, then. Thank you, sir. That being said, we will declare the public hearing open with respect to this rezoning request 13-A011. If there's anyone here that wishes to speak for or against this proposal, Please come forward and give us your name and address and make your comments. Is there anyone that wishes to speak? I don't see anyone that wishes to speak. Therefore, we'll declare the uh, public hearing closed. And do we have a motion concerning this rezoning request? Commissioner Phillips. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve. All right, motion by Commissioner Phillips. Do we have a second? Commissioner Farley and others, okay. Any other questions or discussion? All of you in favor of this, then please say aye. aye. Uh, are there any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you very much. Next on our agenda is item I, and there will be a presentation to uh, Chief Farley by Mr. Jeff Elliott, the director of the fire service program at the Tennessee Fire Academy. Mr. Elliott, welcome. Here, the Tennessee Fire and Codes Academy recognizes fire departments, both career and volunteer, who have excelled in their commitment to training. At this time, I'd like to present to Chief Farley with the Rutherford County Fire and Rescue. We had a two volunteer departments that, that completed over 3,200 hours. So I'd like to present Chief Farley with this. The Rutherford County Fire and Rescue has demonstrated a commitment and dedication to firefighter training and safety with accumulating 3,222 hours. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Elliott. Thanks for that recognition of hard work on the part of a lot of our volunteer fire departments and their leadership and, and our, our county department leadership. Okay, it's time now for our public comments, and we do have eight individuals that have uh, signed up to speak. And I'll remind each of you again, come forward, give us your name and address, make your comments, and there is a little timer here. We do ask you to respect the uh, time limit of three minutes. And our first person that wishes to speak is Kathy Hines. Is Ms. Hines here? I'm not, I don't see anyone coming forward. Okay. That being said, we'll move on to the next person on the list is Pat Sanders. My name is Pat Sanders. Wait. I just got started. Uh, I've been living in Rutherford County 50 years. Gary Farley is my commissioner for a long time now, it seems. Um, my husband was with the health department, state of Tennessee public health department for 25 years, and he was assigned the job of going to Alabama to see the sanitary landfill and came back with Mr. Bill Wilson, the road commissioner, to talk about a sanitary landfill with a liner. It did not get lined. Those liners last about 
30 years and it's already been 40 and it is leaking and Mac Nolan, your man that um, is running the landfill, I guess, he has admitted at the open house, I don't know how many of you all got to go to the open house for the landfill, but he admitted that the old one is leaking. We are asking for a remedy. We're asking for a study and a plan that's coherent to do something about it. Um, I've got a picture of the old one, which my husband suggested, as well as the county built right there. That's the old county landfill. And Chloe Cerruti is holding the leaking for which one? One that has things from construction jobs, demolition, demolition, and construction. That landfill is that. And this is the old one. The satellite did, uh, we gave you all some brochures showing going into the river. Uh, they were colored brochures back earlier this summer or last spring. And we are just asking and pleading for those pools to be corrected or built or whatever it takes to remedy the situation. We don't want it going into the drinking water. That's about all we're asking. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Next to speak, Chloe Ceruti. I'm Chloe Cerruti from Murfreesboro. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First, I'd, I'd like to thank all of you who share our concerns about the importance of maintaining and monitoring the operation of our landfills here in Rutherford County. Independent oversight is a critical element to assuring that these facilities do not become a threat to the health and welfare of the environment or our community. As part of that oversight process and pursuant to the Federal Clean Air Act and Tennessee Air Pollution Control Regulations, TDEC will be holding a public hearing regarding renewal of the operating permit for BFI Waste Systems Middle Point Landfill. This is an ideal opportunity for citizens to ask questions and voice any concerns or complaints which they have about the landfill specifically as it relates to air quality issues. Therefore, we invite you and your constituents uh, to attend this hearing. It will take place on Thursday, August the 22nd at 6 p.m. in the Walter Hill Middle School Gymnasium, and that's located at 6309 Lebanon Pike here in Murfreesboro. We've passed out some flyers about this hearing and would hope that you will share these with others who might be interested. Thank you very much. We hope to see you there. Next is Cindy Wells. I live in Las Casas, Tennessee, and I want to uh, first um, thank Commissioner Tiffany Phillips for um, getting our documents out and working with us to get everybody informed um, in public works. And I, uh, I think there is some good news because the last time that I spoke, um, I had this article from 2010 with the headline, Rutherford County Works to Fix Toxic Leak at the County Landfill. And today I have papers, and I'm hoping you all have these, they probably do, but um, papers of all the work that is going on at the landfill. I believe this is because of the concerned citizens that now after all this time, something is finally being done. 
Um, I think the turning point was when we presented our report proving that the landfill was leaking the leachate into the river. I know that TDEC uh, critiqued our report, and I think you all have our response to that critique that um, Commissioner Phillips. Oh, okay. Well, you may not have it, but you will get it. Um, and I have some. I have a very few copies tonight, if you if you want it. But anyway, um, I think that was the turning point. I know T. Dick tried to critique that report. This is our response to that. Um, and of course, they would do that because if they admit that that the landfill's leaking, it it you know shows they're not really doing their job. And their track record is not that great. If you don't believe me, Google Dixon, Tennessee landfills where they, uh, the landfills actually uh, were killing people before they finally shut them down. But TDEC had said, everything's okay, everything's okay, but it wasn't, uh, Google that. Um, the, I did talk to the biologist at, the, at TDEC and I asked her, how much is your equipment that you ran your water tests on? And she said, $600. I said, oh, okay. Well. The equipment we used in our research was half a mi over half a million dollars. It's like if you go to the doctor, do you want them running your blood tests on your microscope from high school, or do you want them using state-of-the-art equipment that's the latest, greatest in technology? So I think our report is very relevant. The biologist admitted that, uh, with TDEC admitted that it was relevant, and in fact, they're gonna turn it in to um, EPA with their reports that they do every, I think it's every maybe year or two years on um, rivers that are impaired in Tennessee. So I think it was relevant. Um, I think it's cutting edge technology that we brought and I'm glad that it uh, caused some results to, you know, to start and I appreciate it. Mr. Donald Todd. My name is Donald Todd and I live at 633 Buck Lane. <clears throat> Financial crisis threatens our constitutional county government. Let us consider why it was absolutely unnecessary that Rutherford County forced our taxpayers to accept a large tax increase for the 2013-2014 fiscal year. First, examine the huge cash balance for unspent surplus revenue within four major county funds. This total cash balance on June 30, 2012 was approximately $87 million. Then just a few weeks before June 1, 2013, the county trustee revealed a total balance of $39 million in CD and money market investments which came from surplus revenue belonging to the taxpayers and not to the county, but which were surrendered to the control of local bankers who used the money to expand their private loan businesses. So instead of using the taxpayers' money to eliminate a shortfall of $25 million in the current annual budget and make certain that a tax increase would easily be avoided, the county has chosen to give financial benefits to the bankers and ignore the taxpayers. Furthermore, the county trustee estimated that many more millions of dollars of unused surplus revenue had been invested in the LGIP account number one and is presently available but not used properly. If our surplus revenue continues to be surrendered to banks, which are associated with the Federal Reserve, our county will eventually be controlled by the federal government. The Tennessee Municipal League is attempting to organize Metro government in all of Tennessee. Metro government is socialism. The Tennessee Municipal League seems to be forcing elected officials in the county to make unwise financial decisions which could lead to bankruptcy. Take a look at a biblical passage in Isaiah 33:22, In stating that the Lord is our judge, lawgiver, and king, the prophet reminds us that our constitutional form of government is founded on the principle of the separation of three powers. The passage also means that the Lord is the only one who governs by merging all three powers. Agents of Metro government, which is an extension of the federal bureaucracy in the United States, are attempting to organize a socialistic government by merging all three of these powers 
into one power. The Lord is the only one who can do this. But if human beings attempt to merge the judicial, the legislative, and the executive powers into one union, the result will be a ruthless dictatorship. Sadly, there are people in this room tonight who look on our Constitution as an outdated and antiquated document and are in full favor of this merging of powers. Thank you. Kathleen Ferris. My name's Kathleen Ferris. Can you hear me? I live near Las Casas on Compton Road. Um, first of all, I want to say I emailed to all the commissioners except Mr. Jernigan, who doesn't have email, the, the contract of BFI with the county regarding the landfill that was signed in 1995. I realize that some of you probably were not on the commission at that time. Um, but what I want to tell you about today is that on Tuesday of this week, the 13th, Pat Sanders and I met with the head of the TDEC Division of Air Pollution Control, Mr. Barry Stevens, and with members of his staff. And the reason for our meeting is that we know that, that Middle Point is up for their license renewal for air pollution, air, air quality, I suppose it's called. And so we had questions uh, for TDEC regarding what's being done for monitoring of air at Middle Point. Uh, we know that EPA under the Clean Air Act has a three-page list of uh, hazardous air pollutants. So my first question was how many of those are tested for at landfills? None. There are no monitors for air quality on the, around any of the landfills. Uh, TDEC does test for ozone, but the only monitor in Rutherford County was in, in Eagleville, and it was removed at the end of 2012 because they said there are enough other monitors to cover the area. So we have no monitors for air quality, at least not from TDEC, in the, in the county. Now, what happens at the landfills, the gases are collected and they're flared. There is no analysis of those gases before they're burned to determine what's in them. If some of them are escaping into the air uh, and people are breathing them, there's no way to tell what they are. And yet many people have told us that they experience a real stench around the landfills at certain, particularly in hot weather, I think. And we don't know what they're breathing, and there is no way to determine it. And so I would urge you all to be at that meeting, that public hearing, and pose questions to the TDEC people. How are the, on what basis are they going to renew that license if they aren't monitoring what's coming out of the landfill? Thank you. Carrie Norris. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Thank you for your service uh, to our community. My name is Carrie Norris. I reside at 3371 Fan Road here in Rutherford County. On the evening of July the 10th, my family's home was struck by lightning. The propane gas line in my crawl space ruptured, which resulted in a crawl space fire. The Rutherford County Fire Department, comprised of volunteers, did an outstanding job limiting property damage and basically saving our home. Throughout this process, I've learned just how important fire service is in our community. It's my understanding that Many of the trucks are getting old, equipment's becoming outdated, and full-time personnel are needed in many areas to maintain a high level of response in our community. I think it's time to support full-time fire response in our community, and I would encourage 
uh, each of you to strongly consider that. And I want to take this opportunity to thank Chief Farley and the great work that his team um, at the Volunteer Fire Department did in uh, helping, again, limit the um, damage to our home and um, challenges to our uh, family. Thank you. Ben Livingston. appreciate the opportunity to come and talk to you guys tonight. I live at 119 Irving Hills Court in Las Casas. Um, I come tonight to talk about the, uh, the full-time employment for uh, fire, uh, firemen in the county. Our volunteer fire department out Las Casas does a great job. Um, I, uh, I don't really come to speak to the issue of whether we should or should not do that. I come to speak to a issue of whether or not government should have another source of revenue in order to pay for it. I think it's inherently a very bad idea. Um, not that, not, you know, we don't really have a good track record with it. I'm a 32 year graduate of Oakland High School and I, I see the wheel tax is still with us and it's no longer $10 as it was promised to go away. So if we don't trust that things won't go up in the long term, You'll understand that even though this body might decide to have a very low rate, but when you guys are gone and the next generation comes in, guess what? They'll raise it. It may start out at a nickel or 10 cents, but before we know it, it's going to be a dollar or two dollars. If you're going to do this, it needs to be done with the regular property tax. We got enough taxes, gas taxes, sales taxes, uh, all these taxes. And if we open up this Pandora's box for a fire tax, then I guess we'll have to have a law enforcement tax to go along with that. I mean, there's, there's no end to where this goes. So what I would like to ask as a taxpaying citizen of this county, if you're going to do this, give us the chance to vote on whether or not you're going to take money out of my pocket. If you're going to have a separate source of income to pay for this, we want the chance to vote for it. Anything other than that, and you're going to have a Pandora's box because you're going to have a lot of people upset. And chances are, whether you vote to g take it to referendum, which is what I wish you would do. If you're going to do this, it should go to a referendum. And Jack and I have talked about this, and this is the way it needs to go. If you want to do it, take it to referendum. Otherwise, there will probably be a referendum uh, done anyhow. And we all remember what happened when the city tried to cram the uh, convention center down our throat. That didn't go over so well either. If the county wants it and the people want it, let them vote for it. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of resistance. And I don't know whether this thing is good or bad. That's not what I'm here. I'm here to talk about government having another source of revenue, and that's not a good idea. It doesn't ever work out very well for us. And I would request humbly that that's what you do. And um, also, you know, just to mention, you know, we've as taxpayers, we've had some things lumped on us lately that we don't particularly care for. From the federal level, here locally as well, here lately we've gotten to pay for some things that we didn't particularly want to. And uh, I think we'd like to ask our mayor and other things to make sure that if we're going to be a conservative county, uh, we need to start acting like it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next on the agenda is elections and confirmations, and we'll call on Commissioner Gooch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, fellow commissioners. Steering has several items for your consideration this evening. On your desk, you will see a copy of notary candidates, and I would move for their approval, Mr. Chair. Second, Commissioner Coggin. All in favor of that, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. Second, we need to fill uh, two vacancies on the Industrial Development Board and Health Education and Facilities Board. Steering received and considered three candidates, Mr. James Baker, Mr. William Jones, and Mr. Randall Allen. Uh, we received late and did not consider an application from Mr. John Sneed. Steering recommends Mr. James Baker and Mr. William Jones. I so move, Mr. Chair. Second, Second Commissioner Sandlin. Are there any other discussion or questions? 
All of you in favor of that then, please say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Thank you very much. Third, we need to announce a citizen at large vacancy on the insurance committee to fill the unexpired term of Donna Andrews. We need to announce two vacancies on codes enforcement adjustments and appeals board. We need to announce the election of Chairman Pro Tem at the September commission meeting. Also, we need to announce the election of chaplain at the September commission meeting. We need to announce the appointment of Mr. Chip Pinion to the Rutherford County Regional Planning Commission. His term will expire on August 2017. And to announce the appointment of Mr. Greg Lynch to the Rutherford County Regional Planning Commission uh, to fill the unexpired term of Mr. Richie Bolin. His term will expire August 2015. On item number nine, I will turn the floor over to the Chairman Pro Tem, Mr. Jeff Phillips. And on item 10, I will um, give the floor to the chair. Commissioner Phillips. Thank you, Commissioner Gooch. Um, item K-9 is tentatively electing the uh, commission chairman. Um, and at this particular point in time, and I, bl I believe this is the tentative election that will be confirmed uh, in our September meeting. Uh, so at this time, the uh, floor is open for nominations for commission chair. I'd like to nominate the county mayor, Ernest Burgess. Mayor Burgess has been nominated. Make a motion that nominations cease and be approved by acclamation. I have a motion and second that nominations cease uh, and Mayor Burgess be elected by acclamation. All those in favor of that motion, please say aye. aye. Any opposition? That motion carries. Uh, so now we need to confirm uh, uh, the election of, uh, the tentative election of Mayor Burgess. All those in favor of that, please say aye. aye. Any opposition? That motion carries. All right. Thank you again. I appreciate that very much. Now it's time for our election of our steering committee, Commissioner Schaefer. I, I just have a question about the Regional Planning Commission. Did we just announce two people being on, one to replace another, or did we, were we supposed to confirm that they were be on? The agenda should really just say announce. Announce. It is, a mo one? it is an appointment by the mayor. We've had a little bit of discussion about that the last couple of times, and we've discussed that even tonight with uh, County Attorney Cope. So we think what Mr. Gooch did there is the appropriate thing. Okay, that being said, uh, we'll remind you that everyone has an opportunity that chooses to, to nominate one person to the steering committee. That being said, we will, uh, let's just do this sort of, I don't know, last time we got a little bit out of order, but we can do this any way you want to. So uh, I guess we can recognize you. It might be better. Do you have something that is a, in a general way? Just a nominee. So let's just go down the line here, and if anybody, I'm going to look look at each of them. Okay, Commissioner Jordan's the first person I see that wishes to speak. I wish to nominate Gary Farley. All right. Continuing down this group right here, uh, are you next, Mr. Jernigan? I nominate Jack Black. Okay. Let's go down here to 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Commissioner Turner. I nominate Commissioner Steve Salmon. Commissioner Allen. I want to nominate Commissioner Jeff Jordan. Jordan has been nominated. All right. Commissioner Stevens, no nomination. Now let's, let's go to uh, Commissioner Jordan. Okay, Commissioner Baum. I'll nominate Adam Coggin. Adam Coggin has been nominated. Now let's see. Uh, did you... Now I have someone you want to nominate? Sir. Okay, I skipped over you unexpectedly a while ago. Commissioner Black. Commissioner McAdoo. Commissioner McAdoo, all right, thank you. Now we're back to Commissioner Young. Did you have anyone, sir? Commissioner Gooch. Commissioner Gooch. Now, Commissioner Phillips, has your nominee already been made? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, but Mac Mr. McAdoo, anything? Uh, Anyone at the back table here? Commissioner Ely, Gooch, or Serena, do you have anyone to nominate? 
Mr. Gooch has already been nominated, Mr. Serena. That's what you wanted to do. Okay, uh, Madam uh, Clerk, how many did we have nominated? I was not making notes. Seven is nominated. We have seven nominated. Commissioner uh, Move Phillips. That nomination cease and those seven be uh, elected by acclamation. Second by Commissioner Cook and others. All right. If there's no discussion on that, all in favor of that, please say aye. Aye. All right. So we have finished that order of business there with the election of uh, seven members to our steering committee. And I believe now that we have to take a brief uh, recess. We'll let the steering committee go into room 205 and pick a chairperson and a vice chairperson and come back again and tell us their um, meeting time and date. And while they're doing that, everyone get prepared to give over to the steering committee chairperson your uh, request for your committees that you'd like to serve on. Okay, please, um, if you would, Mr. Coggin is chairperson, Commissioner Gooch is vice chairperson, and they will be meeting on the first Monday of each month at 530. And please, each of you turn in your uh, request for your committee assignments to Mr. Coggin. Okay, there's no unfinished business, and we're ready to uh, start on the reports by the standing committees. And there is a uh, purchasing committee uh, monthly report that you have received. Do we have a motion? Ms. Cook made a motion to approve that report. Do we have a second? Second, Commissioner Phillips and Mr. Black. Any discussion or questions? All in favor, then please say aye. Any opposed? Pass. Pass. Mr. Farley passed on that. Okay, now we're ready, Commissioner Ely, to uh, have the Budget, Finance, and Investment Committee report.
Item N2A, the general fund budget amendments. Be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the general fund be amended as follows. Public defender from unassigned fund balance $1,500 to travel $1,000 and other supplies and materials $500. Emergency management. <clears throat> this amendment is to recognize uh, $12,211 in revenue uh, to be carried forward from a 2012 Homeland Security grant and to appropriate that revenue uh, to other equipment. Decreased revenue from Homeland Security grants, $119,090. Decreased unassigned fund balance of $131,301. Increased expenditures for other equipment, $12,211. Fire and Rescue, this amendment reappropriates unspent grant dollars for the sprinkler system project from unassigned fund balance $493 to other supplies and materials $493. From the Sheriff's Department, uh, this amendment reappropriates uh, funds uh, received in 2010 and 2011 uh, for a law enforcement block grant with the city of Murfreesboro. So from restricted for public safety, $69,033 to data processing equipment, $69,033. And operating transfers restricted for capital projects. Um, this um, closes out the Sheriff's Department firing <coughs> range uh, project and the $149 remaining will be transferred back to the general fund and uh, given to the line item restricted for capital projects. Increased revenue for transfers in of $149 and increased restricted for capital projects, $149. Resolved this 15th day of August, 2013. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. Second, Commissioner Jernigan. Any questions on this? Okay, then, uh, please cast your votes. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 21 yes, motion passes. Item N2B, Special Purpose Fund Budget Amendment. Be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the Special Purpose DEA Fund be amended as follows. Sheriff's Department increased revenue from asset forfeitures, $4,050. Increased expenditures for other equipment, $4,050. And resolved this 15th day of August, 2013. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. And a second from uh, Commissioner Schaefer. Any questions? Please cast your votes. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 21 yes, motion passes. Item N2C, Drug Control Fund Budget Amendment. Be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the Drug Control Fund be amended as follows. Drug enforcement restricted for public safety. From restricted for public safety, $240,518. To motor vehicles, $40,518. Building improvements, $200,000. Resolved this 15th day of August, 2013. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. Second, Commissioner P. Any questions or discussion? Please cast your votes. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 21 yes, motion passes. Item N2D, Ambulance Fund Budget Amendment. Be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the Ambulance Service Fund be amended as follows. Emergency Medical Service assigned for public health and welfare from uh, $25,000 going to judgments, $25,000. Resolved this 15th day of August 2013. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. Second from Commissioner Jernigan. Any questions? Please cast your votes. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 21 yes, motion passes. Item N2E, a resolution authorizing 2014 wellness fee. 
whereas a health benefit survey has been conducted of all Tennessee counties, and as a result, it was determined that 32 counties provided incentives for wellness participation, which in some instances affected premiums. And whereas in order to encourage a healthier Rutherford County employee population, and in an effort to help control premiums and claims experience, it is being proposed to implement a wellness initiative promoting a Know Your Numbers campaign, encouraging all employees who participate in the Rutherford County Medical Plan to know their biometric results. Whereas between October 1, 2013 and February 17, 2014, employees who participate in the Rutherford County Health Insurance Program will be encouraged to go to a MedPoint facility take care clinic or their personal physician for a biometric screening consisting minimally of a basic lipid panel and have their screening sent to LabCorp or Quest for processing in order to avoid a $25 monthly wellness fee beginning March 1, 2014, which will be payroll deducted for those employees who do not participate. And whereas those employees who received the basic lipid panel, panel screening between January 1, 2013 and September 30, 2013, will be given credit as completing the required lipid panel screening. Therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the 2014 Wellness Initiative be, implementing, be implemented encouraging employees who participate in the Rutherford County Insurance Program to obtain a biometric screening and that beginning March 1, 2014, a $25 monthly wellness fee be payroll deducted for those employees who do not participate. Resolved this 15th day of August, 2013. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. Second by Commissioner Jordan and Serino. Any discussion? Okay, please cast your votes. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 20 yes, one no, motion passes. Item N2F, a resolution authorizing acceptance of over under delinquent tax payments by Rutherford County Chancellery Court Clerk and Master. Whereas the Office of the Rutherford County Chancellery Court collects thousands of checks, many arriving through the mail, and whereas many checks arrive with an incorrect amount for the payment of taxes, penalty, and interest, and other costs. And whereas staff time, postage, and paper costs make it necessary to establish a policy for handling nominal over and under payments. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the Rutherford County Clerk and Master is hereby authorized to retain excess funds received of not more than $5 over the actual amount owed for the payment of property taxes, interest and penalty and other costs in the clerk and master's excess fees account. And nominal underpayments of $2 or less shall be funded from the clerk and master's excess fees account. Resolved this 15th day of August, 2013. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. Second, Commissioner Schaefer, any questions? Please cast your votes. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 21 yes, motion passes. Item N2G, a resolution authorizing contract with Regional Transportation Authority for Relax and Ride Service. This is our annual contract and the funds are included in the 2013 budget. Be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the county mayor be authorized to execute a contract with the Regional Transportation Authority, a copy of the same being attached here to is Exhibit 1 and incorporated herein by reference as if set forth herein at length verbatim, for the provision of certain grant funded transportation services for a period beginning July 1, 2013, ending June 30, 2014, in the amount of $32,000. $966. Resolved this 15th day of August 2013. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. 
Second from Commissioner Sandlin. Any questions or discussion? Please cast your votes. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. Twenty-one yes. Motion passes. Okay, thank you very much. Next we have Health and Education Committee has no report. Property Management Committee no report. And now we're call on Public Safety Commissioner Farley uh, for a couple of resolutions there. First on the agenda tonight for public safety is a resolution to apply for a safer grant. Be it, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the, the fire chief is hereby authorized to apply for 12 firefighter positions through the 2013 FEMA Safer Grant. Resolved this 15th day of August 2013, and I so move, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Young. Questions? Commissioner Phillips. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, since our last public safety meeting, I've been thinking since that night about uh, putting a referendum on the ballot, and I went for a fire tax. And I, so I did a little bit of research. I contacted Mr. Cope's office. And um, right, as of right now, we're not sure if we can, if we're legally allowed to do a referendum or not. Uh, we have to have a state statute allowing us to do that, and they have not found one yet. They're still doing a little bit more research. And um, Evan Cope promised me that he would get back to me uh, by Monday or so. Did I state that right? Any other discussion? Uh, Commissioner Baum? I was just going to say that I I'm inclined to vote for this. It's just applying for a grant, but I know there has been some discussion about it. I feel like that this uh, grant will probably have a larger impact on the rural areas and the rural residents than groups that live in the city. So I, I'm, I guess my comment is I'd like to hear some feedback from commissioners representing some of the rural areas, either tonight or if they're not prepared to tonight, maybe if we are, are awarded this grant, maybe hear some feedback from them at that time on what their residents think. If the residents are in support of this, then again, I'm in, inclined to support it. But if for some reason they're not, I guess I'd like in my decision making to give some weight to what the rural commissioners have to say about it. Well, one, one thing I'd like to say is uh, this is actually just applying for it. We don't know if we're going to get it or not. So uh, uh, having a referendum or, or doing that may be mute. Uh, we may not get it, but we don't know until we try. And uh, when we've come back within a year and they say yes or no, we'll know at that time. We can make that decision uh, at that time. But this all this is is just applying for a grant. It, and it may take, I haven't applied for so many of these grants, but it could be a year before we know or maybe close to that. Uh, let's say we got two or three. That Commissioner Turner is standing. Sorry, I just jumped. I didn't see anybody. I apologize. I, I think that we would still have to vote as a body to approve receiving the grant anyway. So to Commissioner Baum's point or to Commissioner Phillips' point, even if we did approve just submitting the application, if we didn't want to do it or we wanted to, or we found out from county attorney's office that we can have a referendum, then we could do that at that time before we even accept the grant or even make it conditional. So I just wanted to make that public. I thought that was the understanding that we would still be the body that would vote yay or nay on accepting that grant. I just wasn't, I just wanted to make sure every, all the other commissioners knew that. That's the reason this, this resolution is ever so simple. It only says apply. apply uh, I, think, I think initially those, it had and accept, which we normally do, but we took that out of here. This is only to apply. Thank you. I think those two alternatives that they brought up are getting the cart before the horse, in my opinion. This is just applying. We can cross that bridge later. Uh, Commissioner Schaefer. Uh, Commissioner Farley, how about just explain why 12, you know, that's the maximum when we did, when last year or two years ago we applied for only four. and maybe just the rationale of why well when you apply for, we applied for four the last time and, and basically what the federal government come back and told them was that or the committee up there said uh, it's not enough you there, OSHA there's an OSHA rule you got to have two in and two out to fight a fire that's for safety for the firefighters and also to have a uh, 
engine company fully staffed, you had to have a minimum of four firefighters on the fire engine to be able to accomplish the two in, two out. It's about firefighter safety, and that's why they want to have uh, the, the four person, I won't say four man, because it could be men and women firefighters. So that's, that's one of the reasons. Um, to have four on each shift, there's three shifts, so that's 12 people. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Young and then Commissioner Gooch. I'm in favor for this grant. Obviously, I'm a firefighter. Um, I volunteer with a lot of these guys. I look up to them. Some of them look up to me because I'm a little bit taller. But uh, one thing that this department does that we used to not do in the fire service is rescue. Every one of us is going to go home tonight. Some of y'all are going to get on the interstate. Some of your city commissioners are going to go back up to Smyrna and Laverne. You're going to get on that interstate. What jurisdiction is that interstate? That's the county. So if you wreck, these guys are coming to get you. They do a great job. And, you know, they're kind of cutting their own throats by it, saying, hey, we want paid people. But that's what's best for this county. We're 275,000 people in this county. Bedford County has paid fire service. Wilson County has paid fire service. Those are smaller county than ours. We can talk. I can write you a 30-page piece that's cited in APA format, and I can have the attorney and the finance director go over it, and everything will be correct tell, telling you how we got to fund it. But I'm not, not going to get into that right now. I'm just going to tell you, think about the rescue aspect. If we have a school bus going down 231 South with a football team and they wreck, Who's going to come get them? Not the city of Murfreesboro, but the county. This is long overdue. We should have had paid fire people in this county a long time ago. I know some of you don't like the idea of borrowing money for China. Well, you know what? We're not just borrowing money from China, but if we don't get the grant, Bedford County is going to get the grant, and they're going to borrow the money for China, and we're still all paying for it. So we're, we're shooting our own throat. I mean, we're cutting our own throat by not asking for it. So, I mean, that's why I ask you just to support it. The funding, act, the funding mechanism can be discussed later. It could be put up to referendum. There doesn't have to be a fire tax. The actual other funding mechanism is your solid waste department that comes out of CITUS tax. Most people don't know that. That's where our, that's our solid waste fund goes into the, it comes from CITUS tax, which is the money that can be used for funding fire departments. So again, a whole different discussion. But everybody's worried about this fire tax. It doesn't have to be that way. But let's just get these firefighters on board. It gives us two years. The fire chief's working on a master strategic plan for the county. They're working on it. This is part of that plan. Is to get, but we, we needed these positions five years ago. So let's get the ball rolling. And, and there's a slim chance that we could even get this grant. It's highly, highly competitive. So if we do get the grant, it shows to the rest of the country that we really needed them. So let's give them that opportunity, and that's all I ask you. Just, just give them the opportunity. We can discuss accepting the grant later or retaining the positions later, but let's, let's give that opportunity. Thank you. There was a study done back by CTEST, and I don't know what year it was, but it was, uh, it was actually before um, Mayor Burgess came on, and Mayor Allen was 2004. It actually talked about this back in 2004. It talked about that, the plan. And we're here we are in 2013, and we've enacted part of that, that uh, C-test study that was done. Uh, what a lot of people don't know, I know Jack knows it. Uh, he's been a firefighter, and, and uh, uh, Matt knows ISO, it's Insurance Service Organization. That's State Farm, Farm Bureau, you know, nationwide insurance. All these insurance companies, they go by this insurance rating. And right now, there's some nines and some sevens and some eights inside Rutherford County. What that does, uh, and there's some tens in Rutherford County, and a 10 is basically nothing, no fire protection. And there's a gentleman in Commissioner Gucci's district out there that I think his, uh, his homeowner's insurance, he's, he, he's outside the city uh, in Rutherford County, in the rural area of Rutherford County. His... Um, his homeowner's insurance increased because it's over five miles from a fire station, and it jumped roughly to $2,500, uh, his premium, where it was somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,000 a year. He's about two miles from the inside the city limits of Murfreesboro, 
and he could see a fire station and probably throw a rock at it, he would probably be better off being annexed and, pay, and paying just a little bit more on city taxes, and it's saving him money. You know, we've got that scenario all over this county. There's a lot of area out in the Christiana area, the Fossil area, uh, I, I know in the Rockvale area, that's over the five miles. Uh, the Blackman area, it, there's some areas out there. I remember when John L. Beatty's deal happened that last year, burn up. Uh, you know, people like it are needing help. I remember back last year when all that was going on, Commissioner Phillips was worried about the, the, the fire uh, works going off around her house and, and, and it burning up and stuff. But this county needs this. And I know some of you may not believe it or agree with it, but they need it. The citizens need it. We'll talk about funding it at a later time. There, there probably won't have to be the fire tax. The silence tax, like Matt was talking about, that's an avenue we can look at. But right now, all this is is actually going out here and applying for it. We may not get it. Uh, Commissioner Gooch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, I guess uh, Commissioner Baum asked opinion from a real commissioner. I just would like to take your minds back to 2006. The city of Murfreesboro was uh, forcing annexation on a large piece of my district and a large piece of Commissioner Farley's district. We had town hall meetings, public hearings, and part of the city's argument was that if you let us annex you, we'll give you fire protection. My constituents made it crystal clear to me. It was crystal clear. We don't want to pay for fire service. We're satisfied with volunteers. We don't want to pay for fire service. Now, have they changed their mind? I don't know. They may have. But I need time to go out and maybe take a comprehensive plan that maybe the chief, Commissioner uh, Chairman Farley, and the mayor give me a plan a long-term vision, and I appreciate your vision, Chief, and then associated cost, and then where I can say this is what we have to offer, this is how much it's going to cost, let's talk about it. I'm just asking for time for feedback. Um, I think that when we see a legislation that says, okay, 12 firefighters, well, who's opposed to that? It's, it's emotional. But logically speaking, I need some feedback, and I don't have that feedback. I think you'll have 12 months, roughly 12 months, to get that feedback when we apply for the grant. But I can't vote for legislation right now that will potentially cause for a fire district tax when my constituents have already said we don't want to pay for it. Now, they may have changed their mind, and, and, and maybe hopefully they have, because I think it's a good idea. But I just need time for feedback. Even if we are fortunate enough to get selected we'll have to come back for a full full thorough discussion before we accept even accept the application that uh, they may offer to us commissioner p right i'm a little bit slow getting up uh, a couple of you asked what rural commissioners thought of this of course i've been a volunteer firefighter in the past um uh, I know what our volunteers are doing for us out there, and it's a lot. Uh, if I was to trade, I, I said in the meeting the other day, if I had to trade with the department that Larry's uh, set up, and it's a good department, trade with our volunteers, I'd keep our volunteers right now. But the trouble is there's times that we do not have volunteers available. And during those times, this grant uh, would have those 12 people fall in place that would help cover that. Uh, there are times when my house is on fire and everybody is out at work, uh, I may not have enough volunteers in my district to cover that. And being a volunteer, uh, I'm as, about as far east as you can get in this county, but I fought fire in Laverne City. I fought fire in Murfreesboro. I fought fire in Woodbury. I fought fire in all over this county but and we've got some great people that are doing that what I think people here are, are looking at is they're saying hey if I vote for this I'm voting for a tax no you're not you're voting to let us have 12 people if we get the grant for two years at that time then we have to decide do we want to continue this if we do 
then we're going to have to pay for it. Now, personally speaking, I do not want a side tax, I mean a, a fire tax out in my districts. And I think just about anybody will tell you, no, we do not want another tax if we do not have to have another tax. That's my personal feelings. Um, most of the people I've talked to over the years have pretty much felt the same way, but I'm kind of like Commissioner Gooch. Things are changing. Uh, a guy that's got a $1,000 a year fire, I mean insurance cost, and it goes to $2,500 a year, would probably look at that a little bit differently than he has in the past. Now, I'm telling you, these insurance ratings are super important. You may not realize that, but I know when we got the ratings down out in the Kittrell area, I had people calling me that were saving $800 to $1,000 a year on their insurance costs. Now, if you don't think that that makes a difference in people's thought process, you're wrong. It does make a huge difference how much money is coming out of their pocket and what they can use for other expenses. And most people out in the rural areas support their volunteer fire departments. A lot of people give money all the time. Some of them, they have special fundraisers. For instance, this Saturday, Kittrell's having a ham breakfast, 6 to 10. I'll go ahead and get that in, Mayor. <laughs> so, so we want your money now. <laughs> but at any rate, that money... Uh, puts tires on these vehicles, puts gasoline in those uh, tanks, fuel, not necessarily gasoline. It helps them pay for all the different services, the light bills. I mean, back when I was active, our, our bills in were over 40000 a year. It takes a lot of money to run these departments, and now they're trying to run extrication and man these departments around the clock. And to do that, guess what? You got somebody in the building, you got to have lights, you got to have heat, you got to have air conditioning for these guys to be able to survive in there. So it's costing more money now than it did in the past. But am I ready for a new tax? No. Am I ready to try out this, this chance for us to get 12 people? Yes, I am, because it's not going to cost us anything for two years. At the end of two years, we'll see if it would cost us uh, more than what we have available and that's the only time we'd have to look at implementing a fire tax if we wanted to spend more than what we needed then we may not we may have the money available without doing that so I would urge you to go ahead and let these guys apply we don't know if we're going to get the 12 positions let them apply we've got them for free for two years if we do succeed so, thank you Commissioner Black Also, um, out of it, like I said, I've been a firefighter for 29 years. I, I, I'm with y'all guys, but um, I think you know having a little vision on down the road. If I'm gonna do some ifing, if we apply, we get this. I think there's 92 firefighters out there at Rutherford County. We're applying for 12. What's going to be the fallout? What's going to be the fallout on them other 84? Oh, the, 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 I know I would be ill if I was doing the same thing that the other ones that got picked. That might cause some complications within that department. Uh, another thing, uh, I've been up here going on 11 years on these grants. Uh, it's it's going to be a price tag on the end of it, and um, if we if we do get granted this, um, uh, right now I just don't I just don't uh, I like I like to see it go to a referendum. We got an election coming up here next year. I'm sure this grant will be out there. We'll apply for it then. The folks we can we can word it. We're going to apply for this grant if we'd succeed. I'm not about to impose no tax on good folks out of my district. Thank you.
Uh, okay, does anyone else wish to speak that hasn't already spoken first? Then we can come back. Commissioner McAdoo wanted to speak, and then Commissioner Stevens. Uh, he brought up a good point. Uh, is, it, is it a time frame on applying for this grant? Do we have to apply for it? By the end of August. By the end of August. Commissioner Stevens. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think my concern with even filling out the application and turning it in is assuming that we do get this money, which at the safety meeting, I thought it was going to be like five or six hundred thousand. And I read in the paper today that we're up to eight hundred thousand now. But how many of us? Stop. The paper has no knowledge that eight hundred thousand dollars is the cost of it. I didn't read that. But anyway, that's not accurate. OK, well, even if it's five or six hundred thousand, how many of you are going to turn down a check for that much money if we get awarded the grant? So if we get awarded the grant, I feel sure that we're probably going to take it. And then once we create 12 new government positions, what's the likelihood that we're actually going to lay those people off if the grant runs out in two years? When's the last time we've cut a job? It's just not going to happen. So if we, take, if we apply for this, get the money, and take it, this is going to be a permanent new department. And the funding will have to come from somewhere. Now, if this is a critical need that we have, my understanding is that we can remove some money from the solid waste department from the CITES tax and use that money to help fund these positions now or beginning of the next fiscal year. And then if we changed our insurance rates and eliminated the pension program and saved money there, we could use that money to replenish in the solid waste department. Can we do that, Ms. Nolan? We can do anything this body chooses to do that that's practical and uh, we have the funds with which to do it. I mean, there's ways that we can get the money maneuvered from one department to another. And I just don't see that we need to be relying on them to fund this uh, department for us when we have ways that we could do it ourselves and we could do it faster. So I've got some friends that are volunteer fire uh, fighters, and they've told me that they don't think we need to do this. And, and they had the same concerns that Commissioner Black had, which was going to be which 12 get paid and which ones don't. So I just think we need to be real careful before we start applying for these grants. And if you apply for it, you're kind of sending the message that you want to begin this department uh, with the 12 paid firefighters. And ultimately, we might have to do that in the future. I'm not opposed to having paid firefighters, but we have a way to pay for them ourselves. And um, I think we need to look at much better planning before we jump into something like this. Don't let them go ahead and apply. We won't never know, will we? Uh, we have a call for the question. Um, is there a second? I have to take the second. Stephen second. Mr. Stephen second that. All right. We have to get a two-thirds vote on this, Steve, before we can. All right. We have a call for the question and a second. I'm going to have to. Please cast your votes, and I'll just see if we get a two-thirds vote. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote, or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 11 yes, uh, 10 no, motion fails. Okay, so the question failed. Did, now, who's next to speak? Mr. Sandy, were you next? To, were you wishing to speak, sir? Uh, we didn't get okay. two-thirds, so right, we're, we we're still on the floor with this discussion for this. Uh, well, I had a couple of questions. Um, uh, let, me, let me first start out by saying that, that I am for applying, okay? Um, we decided whether the new commissioners, I think, I don't know if y'all were in yet or not, but, you know, this, this was a department that was decided uh, a few years ago. And so whenever you start a department, I don't care what department it is, you know, it's going to increase. And uh, this is one that we, that we knew this was going to happen um, slowly but surely. And I think, you know, it's been, what, four years later. So, you know, we're getting to where we were headed, I think, maybe. But I do have some reservations on it. And, and um, I, I'm in agreement also about uh, going to a referendum as far as uh, fire tax or whatever you want to label it, call it, or whatever. A couple of questions, Jim, I want to ask is, the, the referendum part, if you can explain that to me, but um, our time frame on applying for this grant and then when we have to implement it, what, what is that time frame there? Of course, well, and I know it depends on when we're awarded it, but if we're looking at 12 months, 10 months down the road as far as being 
um, accepted or whatever, what is our time frame on using it before we lose it? Because I, I don't want to be into a corner here again saying, man, if we don't, if we don't implement this now, then we're going to lose it and, and we're going to miss the referendum spot and all that sort of stuff to bring it for the voters. On, uh, uh, Mr. Cope can answer some of those questions. I'm not, all of that is not clear on the timing. I know we have to make the application now, basically by the end of August. Is that correct, Mr. Farley? Then it may be six, eight, 10, 12 months before we get an answer. And once we get an answer, I don't know how many months do we have to, uh, before we have to say yes or no. We're not going, no one's going to say yes or no until this commission has authorized the execution of that document. So it's, I guess this is how long it takes us to make that decision. Uh, so Commissioner Young may have done this before, so uh, I don't know if they've ever turned down one or not. With the, and there have been departments that have turned down the SAFER grant. I've written majority of these. I actually wrote the last SAFER grant for the county prior to it becoming the county and consolidating the departments down. Uh, it goes through the awards process. It's going to take a year. The grant would be awarded. They send notification that they've awarded Rutherford County of the grant. We have to then turn and accept the grant. That means we have to vote on it as a legislative body and then hit the submit button that we do accept the grant. Uh, it's, it might be a 30-day a window that we can, from the time they notify us to the time we can uh, accept. Uh, the grant amount, I believe, was $670,000. Is that correct? Uh, there actually, so everybody wonders about this much money. There is that much money in the CITUS tax. So we could skate around it for a little while. If we start getting 15, 30, 60 firefighters in the county, yes, we're going to have to have a fire tax. But with that number, it's close. Well, now you look at two years of growth in the CITUS tax. We just added a Dollar General tonight. Hey, that's good for the volunteers because that puts money in the coffers. That number is going to grow, so that tax revenue base is going to grow. So by the time we have to pay for this, that revenue should be there. And Ms. Nolan can probably help me out with that a little bit uh, because that money is allotted for this. Does that make sense? That's why we shouldn't really be. Well, I've been up here quite a while, and should and is is a different, different, two different things. And so when we set aside money, we have to set aside money, you know, exactly for that and earmark it for that. Only Otherwise, other, it's not there. The only other thing is the solid waste it can go for. So unless solid waste grows, we're, th those are the two competing entities out of a special fund that legally we can't argue anyway uh, because they have to be used for basically one or the other because that's the unincorporated sales tax outside. Well, I was the under the impression that, that part of that CITUS tax money is earmarked, well, it's strictly earmarked for our landfill because of the unknowns. Uh, we have to have so much there that we don't even have there uh, officially. We've, we've tagged it as X amount of million dollars, but we don't actually have that millions of dollars set aside for a uh, catastrophe or something to go wrong. So I, I, correct me if I'm wrong on that. have a bond on that. Yes. You've got a bond on that. We've got an estimate of $1.2 million of the CITES tax going to fund solid waste. I just caution you, it's being used to fund solid waste. So when you s move it over and assign it to fire, which you can, you have a hole. <laughs> You've got a hole somewhere that you're going to have to address in the solid waste. Okay. That, that answers that question. That's what I was, what I was, what I was saying. Uh, Jim, what uh, is our lead way uh, within this next year, between now and, I guess, the August elections or whatever? Is this something that you all are researching? Is that what you're talking about uh, with being able to do this fire tax and the legalities of that or or what, what is in place there, or what you're checking out? State laws don't permit that kind of advisory opinion. 
So there's going to have to be a statute or statutes that allow a referendum on this particular subject matter. And we are looking in to see if such a statute exists. We haven't completed our research yet. And as uh, Commissioner Phillips indicated, hopefully by the first of the week, we'll be able to advise whether a referendum is permitted on this particular subject. I spoke, uh, Mayor, oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me, go ahead. Uh, Commissioner Schaefer. I'll yield him. Uh, First off, you know, whatever way this goes, there's no skin off my nose or the people in my district. But, you know, I want to do what's right for the people in the county. But I know I got my homeowner's insurance bill last month. It starts getting paid on in August. It's $1,245. That's not counting the $180 I pay on flood insurance because I know Laverne isn't going to do anything, even though I'm not in a flood zone. But... Uh, five years ago, it was less than $700. And I've got right now a new fire station. It's about a par three and a decent par five away from the house. So, you figure, <laughs> so that's less than, about, less than a half a mile, okay? And, that's what, and it's going up basically $500, $100 a year. And uh, my point being is that insurance is going to keep rising and keep rising. If you look at it, if you look at your automobile insurance, you know, and uh, even if you don't have a claim, it goes up. The other thing is, is I would just like to ask the question of uh, the fees out at the landfill now with B uh, Alliance, is that it, BFI? The monies we get from that, what funds it go into? Does it go in back into the sanitation uh, fund? All of it goes back in. Any other questions or discussions? Harley has well, been willing to say. One other question, too. What, you know, this is the grant for the people, so this has nothing to do with extra trucks or anything like that, correct? So if these 12 people come in and they're immediately, are we accepted or whatever, are they going to have the equipment to, to work off of? I mean, I mean, they've got other equipment, but what I'm saying is, are they going to have the equipment that they need to be on a 24-hour? They are. Yes. Because I was asking in budget, you know, our last fire engines we did were 145,000 or whatever, and now they're 300 plus, 400 thousand dollars. They're going to use the engines that are already assigned to the Rutherford County Fire Rescue Department. That's where they would be stationed. Okay. Uh, like I said at the very beginning of this talk, I'm for applying, but don't push me into a corner. I am a rural county commissioner. Don't push me in a corner and make me have to make a decision 30 days after it's accepted to, to be ready to fund this thing. I, I think we're getting a cart just a little bit before the horse. We need to talk about the, the funding mechanism. Sure, we got two years to think about it, but I think we need to have a two-year plan, like Commissioner Gooch was saying, prior to us accepting this thing. So um, if, if this thing is not going to be approved for a year, then I ask, um, well, uh, Lisa Nolan, the mayor, uh, county attorney on, on that issue that we talked about. Let's get busy on how we're going to fund this thing if we're accepted to this and, and have a plan. Thank you. All right. Got one last thing, and, and I agree with you, and I agree with Commissioner Gooch on that plan. That's something that I've wanted to see. Uh, with the redistricting, thank you. Now I'm a rural county commissioner because I've got part, Commissioner Gooch's district that's in a Blackman area. Um, it's not about city or county. If, you're, if you have city only district your residents drive in the county and again they are affected by this protection they might not pay for it directly but they uh, they are protected by them when they're traveling up and down these roads so everybody in this room is affected by this department right here if you drive in the county if you drive on i-24 840 you are affected and that's i, I know i know I, and so, so the city commissioners that are kind of, and I don't mean, yeah, the city commissioners that are kind of like, well, hey, I'm just taking a backseat approach to this. You've got an interest in this because your wife, your children, your grandchildren drive on these roads. You want them to have equal protection. That's what it's about. It's not just about your house. I mean, that's, that's what we get wrong on this. And how many, we voted for uh, SROs. We have more children die in car wrecks in this county 
than we've ever had shot in a Rutherford County school. But we just voted to put SROs in them. That's a fact. Let's go to fire deaths. I, can, we can, I don't really want to do it, but we can raise hands to see who's pulled a burned body out of a house. Because I know, I know there's been people in here that have done it. How many times has you know, something like that happened with these, with these SROs? Now, the SROs do a good thing, and I'm not meant to diminish them and what they do. But we just voted for that. So, if, you know, we're talking about a grant. We're not talking about a fire tax right now. The, the money's, uh, like I said, close to there. But let's, let's look at the problem at hand, which is getting 12 firefighters to be on duty 24-7, 365 days a year, so that if something happens, you're guaranteed response. That's what it's about. At the end of the day, we're talking about guaranteed response. These guys wouldn't be in here supporting it if it was going to be an issue of whether they were going to be paid or volunteer. The majority of fire departments across this country are either volunteer or combination departments. A combination department has paid and volunteer people in the same department. That's what this department would go to. It's done great across, across the country. Combination departments are, are the majority now because that's where they're going. Um, you can't pay everybody, but these guys work their way up to a job. And if they can't get a job at, this, uh, at the county, they'll apply to the city or other cities or other municipalities. It's kind of a, you know, a learning trade for them. And that's the majority of these volunteers. So, I, again, I just ask you to apply for it. How many, how, many people, how many more people have to die because we're too afraid to govern? I'm not scared to govern. I'm not worried about a tax. If that's what it takes to provide safety to these citizens, that's what it takes. But that's not what we're here about. We're asking for a grant. So, okay, hey, Commissioner Farley, you've been wanting to make a comment. And then let's see if anybody else wants to speak that hasn't already spoken. Uh, only thing I want to say, I want to add, uh, I spoke to the ISO representative that was the manager for over nine states, and I asked him a question uh, about how, basically, how much it would lower insurance premiums. He said, by having this uh, paid firefighters, you got it. By having these paid firefighters, that what it would do as far as a mutual aid agreement, which we've got that, we're, they're responding all over the county, it could take a Class 9 fire department and put it to a Class 5. And that could roughly save $200, $250 on a $150,000 house. Now, $250 is, to, you know. So it's more than $250. All right, call for a question from Mr. Stevens and a second on Mr. Turner. Uh, we'll try this again. All right, please cast your votes on calling for the question. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 16 yes, 5 no, motion passes. All right, the mo the motion to call for the question has passed. We're ready to vote. Please cast your votes on simply. We, uh, we will have a roll call vote. And this is for the Board of Commissioners to authorize the fire chief to apply for 12 firefighter positions through the 2013 FEMA Safer Grant. Please cast your votes. Anyone that did not vote and wishes to vote or anyone who would like to change your vote, you may do so now. Record the votes. 17 yes, 4 no, motion passes. All right, thank you very much. Mr. Farley, you have one other resolution, I believe. Yes, sir. Yeah. Next, this resolution tonight is to resolution to affirm and support. It can wait National Day of Action and the nationwide no texting while driving uh, movement. Whereas the Tennessee County Services Association holds the health and safety of its teenagers and adults as chief concern, and whereas through the ICanWait.com, Facebook, text to pledge, tweet to pledge, and events, more than 1.5 million people have committed to never text and drive. And whereas 98% of the American commuters now sending a text or email while driving is not safe. And whereas nearly 50% of commuters who text while driving reported activity as being a habit. And whereas a Virginia Tech study showed that those who send text messages while driving are 23 times more likely to crash. And whereas a driver that sends a text message 
while driving not only jeopardizes his or her safety, but also the safety of passengers, pedestrians, and other drivers. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the Rutherford County does hereby affirm its support of, it, of the It Can Wait National Day of Action, the nationwide no texting while driving movement, and the proclamation of September the 19th, 2013 as No Text On Board Pledge Day. Resolve this 15th day of August 2013, and I so move, Mr. Chairman. Second, Commissioner Jordan. Any other discussion or question on this? All in favor of this, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Wow, that was unanimous. <laughs> okay. Public Works and Planning, a uh, resolution by Commissioner Tiffany Phillips. What Ms. Wells was talking about earlier was uh, there's a document from Mr. Wells and we've had technical difficulties and as of this afternoon, I'd sent it again to Vicki this morning. As of this afternoon, I've not seen it go, go through your email yet. If it's not through your email, I promise I'll just put it in your boxes, okay? By next, early next week. You'll definitely have it one way or the other. All right, a resolution on drainage easements. Whereas pursuant to the private act authorizing the Rutherford County Highway Commission and superintendent to work on public drainage easements and provide for the maintenance of public drainage easements requires the county legislative body establish an official list of recognized public drainage easements. The attached exhibit one are the easements recommended by the planning department. And whereas the public works and planning committee has approved the list of public drainage easements as submitted by the planning department. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the County Commission approves as additional public drainage easements the attached list, Exhibit 1, as submitted by the Planning Department in accordance with Tennessee Code Annotated 54-903 and 54-904. These public drainage easements, in addition to those previously approved, shall be the only public drainage easements which shall be worked upon by the Rutherford County Highway Department. Resolved this 15th day of August 2013. Mr. Chairman, I so move. Second, was that Commissioner Turner? Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. Now we have one resolution from our steering legislative and governmental committee, Commissioner Coggin. Chairman, we have commissioners a resolution regarding a name change uh, request from. Um, the overall creek to change it to grove creek and no it's not the overall creek we all know and love it's a small, small little creek whereas the united states board of geographic names has requested the approval of rutherford county to change the name of overall creek to grove creek and whereas overall the overall creek in question is located in both rutherford county and williamson county and is a small creek in the eagle area and is not the overall creek in the city limits of, in, of Murfreesboro. And whereas deeds as early as 1796 through 1957 referenced the creek as Grove Creek. Now therefore be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners, the County Mayor B, and hereby is authorized to execute the geographic name proposal recommendation, a copy of the same being attached here too as Exhibit 1, indicating the approval of Rutherford County to change the name of the overall creek in Eagleville area to Grove Creek. Resolved the 15th day of August, 2013. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. And a second from Commissioner Farley. Uh, any questions on this matter? All right, all of you in favor of this, please say aye. aye. Are there any opposed? Thank you very, very much. Is there any other business that needs to come before this body? Commissioner Jeff Phillips. Thank you, Mayor Burgess. I'll try to be really brief. Uh, in, in September, back up very briefly. The uh, Rutherford County Regional Planning Commission has been working on subdivision regulations, updating subdivision regulations all year, as we've talked about in the past. There was one section of that uh, subdivision regulations that dealt with sprinkler systems uh, in areas of the county that could not be developed because they didn't have adequate water supply to support fire hydrants. It's in there now. A lot of discussion and a lot of opposition, it appears, about that section in our new subdivision regulation. Uh, attorney General's opinion was asked for and rendered, and it appears that the Attorney General says that uh, any new regulation 
i personally don't feel like this is a new regulation but since we're putting in new subdivision regulations uh, this falls under that category according to our county attorney uh, so that section of the subdivision regulations is coming before this body next month for your consideration uh, you might have even let, read an article in today's news journal from someone saying that don't make it mandatory that we have sprinklers. And that's what we've been hearing all year. As much as we try to diffuse that, we've been unsuccessful in doing that. So as you begin to hear some input from some of the folks that live around you, uh, over the next few weeks before this comes before you, let me try to clarify that by saying sprinkler systems are in our subdivision regulations now, and it is not mandatory, and it is not proposed to be mandatory. What's in there right now is that there are sections of our county that will not support fire hydrants. And if the fire hydrants cannot be supported, that land is deemed undevelopable. Okay? If we take the option to put sprinkler systems in, then that land cannot be developed. The only thing that that section does in our subdivision regulations is to allow land that would not have adequate fire protection because they won't support fire hydrants to be able to build by using an option of putting sprinklers in. Not mandatory, it's an option. You can do that if you want. You don't have to, but you can do that if you want. Let me make that really clear again. It is an option. And that's what you're going to hear next week. There are probably going to be some folks that will come to you and say, mandatory sprinklers, mandatory sprinklers, mandatory sprinklers, and that is not the case. I'll get up and say that again next month. And those of us that are on the Regional Planning Commission have heard it over and over and over and over again. And we had an hour and 45 minute public hearing this past Monday night, and those were a lot of those objections too. I understand that. And if it were mandatory, I would probably be making those same objections. But I just want to emphasize, once again, it is not mandatory. There are sections of this county that cannot be developed because the water system, the water lines, will not support a fire hydrant. So the only way to develop those lands is to give them an option to provide fire protection, which is sprinkler systems. It's an option. If you want to develop that land, you have to give adequate fire protection for those homes in that subdivision. And the only alternative we could come up with would be to sprinkler those homes. So I just wanted to make that really clear before all of the things that you might hear. And the reason that I stood up is because of another letter to the editor. And if you want to read that in today's paper, today's news journal, it indicated that what we're trying to do is to force mandatory sprinklers out there. And it's not the case. And I really want to emphasize that. If you have any questions, you can call the planning department. You can t talk to me. Uh, sometime between now and next and next month. But there are areas of this farmland way out in the country that do not have adequate lines, water lines, to, pro to, to provide fire hydrants. And we want that land to be developed if they can. And the only way to do it is to provide adequate fire protection. And in our minds, that's uh, adding sprinklers just as an option. Thank you. Any other business, anyone, any announcements? Commissioner Jordan and then Commissioner Turner. I appreciate it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. At about three minutes to six tonight, uh, uh, Mr. Bill Jones, uh, who has one of those super duper phones where you can call around the world and everything, and I asked him to check for me and see uh, a baseball score, which uh, is kind of unusual request, I guess, but I'm happy to report that uh, Smyrna Bulldog Sonny Gray won his first major league game tonight. He, uh, 
He pitched eight innings uh, uh, and uh, I think gave up four hits. And I believe the final score was five to nothing. So uh, not only is he a state champion in football, uh, maybe twice, I'm not sure. But he, anyway, they won two. But he's, now he's in the major leagues to stay, I hope. And, he, and he's a winner tonight. So that's terrific. Mr. Turner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sometimes I'll be real brief and switch hats here to the chaplain hat. Uh, we get a lot of heated discussions up here, and there's emotions can run high, but I think in the end of the day, we all care about each other. And uh, publicly, as the chaplain, I want to send our condolences as the chaplain, as the commission, to Mr. P and Mr. Jordan on the loss of some family members. They were wonderful members of the community, and you gentlemen have been in our prayers, and we're appreciative of what your families have done for the community, and we're sorry for your loss. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well said. Any other announcements? Commissioner Pease already announced about the Kittrell ham breakfast Saturday. If there's no other discussion or other announcements, we are adjourned. Thank you.